Hello everybody. Today what we're going to be looking at is comparing proportional relationships. So the first thing that we need to do is remind ourselves what is a proportional relationship. So I'm going to have a table right here and I'm just going to make up some quick values to um, have us understand this a little better. So if I had 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9... Uh, these are just like an X and Y table points, and I'm just labeling these right here. But what I want us to see is this part with a ratio. The ratio is Y over X. I want to compare each and every one of these ratios. Now, anytime you have zero in the denominator, it's going to be an undefined ratio because you can't have zero in the denominator. So I almost want you kind of ignoring the zero over zero part. And let's start with the numbers over here. So on this one, if I had my ratio of Y over X, I would have my y value, which is 3, over my x value, which is 1. This simplifies to 3. Now, similar, if I had 6 over 2, which is just y over x, that would simplify to 3. And finally, if I had 9 over 3, that would also simplify to just 3. Now, when you look at each and every one of these ratios, they all are equal to 3. Therefore, this would be considered a proportional relationship. It's a proportional relationship when you look at the ratio of y over x, which we did here, they are all equivalent. So for instance, in seventh grade, you might have learned uh, if we have a table looking like this, graphically what it would look like is our graph would go right through the origin. It might go up a little, it might go down a little, but it is going right through the origin. So these are all examples of what a proportional relationship is. One by looking at a graph, excuse me, by looking at a graph, and one by looking at a table of points. So let's go ahead and do a few examples. And it says DJ is pouring cement into his backyard patio that has an area of 100 feet. The cement comes out of a truck at a constant rate, which means it's not going up or down. It's coming out at the same rate each and every time. All right, so... Um, it is very important that he gets all the cement poured before noon, before 12 o'clock, um, when, when it gets too hot for the cement to be mixed properly. It is currently 11 a.m., and he has poured 75 square feet of concrete in the last three hours. State the independent and dependent variable. So usually, I would say about 9 out of 10 times, or maybe even higher, um, the independent variable is always going to be time if time is a factor. So the majority of the time, anytime you see time, that's going to be your independent variable. So for independent, we are going to say time. And now the next thing where it says the dependent variable, what is time affecting? Well, the more time that goes on, it's the amount of cement that is poured. So we're just going to write amount of cement. So now let's go ahead and look at the next part. We're going to need to be able to fill in this graph. So if we can go to the next slide. There we go. Um, we're going to want to label our X and Y graph. So uh, the first thing we said it was time and we said amount of cement. And these are hours that are going by. So this was just uh, time in hours. So we had zero hours, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours. And the first, we need to figure out how much is actually being poured. So we can actually uh, figure this out by looking at the ratios. So if I looked at uh, y over x, this would be 50 over 2, which I could realize in one hour it poured uh, 25 square feet of cement. So when we start off with zero tier time that goes by, that means that zero um, cement was poured. The first thing would be in one hour, that means we'd have 25 square feet. Um, two hours was 50 square feet, which means in three hours we'll have 75 square feet. And in four hours, which is noon, we'd have 100 square feet. So when it asks us to graph this, we would just label these points of 0, 0, 1, 25, 2, 50, 3, 75, 4, 100. 
And it says, should the graph be discrete or continuous? A discrete graph means it's only dots. It's not going to be a straight line. These are instances like if you're um, buying, I don't know, let's say like a pizza or like a drink. You can't buy half a drink. You can't go into Papa John's Pizza and order half a pizza. You have to get one whole pizza or two whole pizzas or three whole pizzas. You can't buy part of a pizza. But on this one, um, a continuous graph means you can just select anything. So for instance, what do I mean by that? If I were to graph this, it would first, it would be continuous. We would have a straight line. And what this represents, like, we only label the one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour. But we could find the amount after half an hour, or a fourth of an hour, or an eighth of an hour, how much cement was actually poured. Because it's pouring at a continuous rate, it's always pouring into this area. So this would be a continuous graph because the cement is always pouring from zero to four hours. All right, will uh, DJ finish the job by noon? Yes, he will, because it was 100 square feet, and he will get the 100 square feet at noon. All right, so if Kevin pours 35 square feet of concrete per hour, how would the graph uh, representing the situation change from uh, or differ from DJ's? Well, if we remember, DJ was pouring 25 square feet per hour. Now we have Kevin. Kevin has a different machine and it's actually pouring faster. His is pouring at 35 square feet per hour. So if we were to graph this, if I go back a few slides to look at this, that means in one hour, Kevin would have poured 35 feet in two hours, 70, in three hours, 105. So a little more than we, what we actually have. And if I were to graph this, so if I get my line, and I now graph this one, we can see that the graph is steeper. I'm filling it up at a faster rate. Uh, therefore, that's how the graph is. So when you have a higher slope or a higher uh, unit rate, it's actually going to have a steeper graph um, than the one before it. All right, so then um, that is uh, the first question. So let's go on to the next question. It says, Barry and Felicity are making super smoothies to re-energize themselves after a long workout. Felicity follows the recipe, which calls for two cups of strawberries. So this is key information, so let's make sure we have this highlighted. Two cups of strawberries for every three bananas. Barry wants twice as much as Felicity, so he makes a smoothie with four cups of strawberries and five cups of bananas. Barry's ta uh, smoothie tastes, um, says it's too tart, it's too bitter. Um, there are too many strawberries. Explain why Barry's smoothie was too tart. Well, if we looked at this, the proportion that we said that the recipe called for was two cups of strawberries for three cups of bananas. And so that's what it should have looked like. So if we were to continue to do this, um, we could have different equal proportions of maybe four cups of strawberries for six cups of bananas. I want you to see I added two to my numerator and added three to the denominator. Um, and we can continue this to have um, six cups of strawberries for nine cups of bananas. Now we talked about being proportional where the ratios are equal. These are actually equal fractions. So if I uh, simplify any of these, these would actually equal um, two thirds as well. So um, looking at the next part, Barry wants twice as much. So what he did is he added, so let's go ahead in color blue, showed what Barry actually did. So Barry wanted twice that amount. So what Barry did is he had two things of strawberries, three things of bananas. He added two cups to each of them to get four over five. It's not proportional though. Four fifths does not equal two thirds. So what he should have done is keep it proportional by adding two more cups of strawberries and three more cups of bananas to get uh, four over six because that would have been equivalent. All right, state the unit rate. Um, a Felicity smoothie. So if we remember unit rate, unit rate is saying um, how much 
is my strawberries increasing when my bananas only increase by one? It's essentially saying your denominator needs to increase uh, by one. Um, so if we were to look at this, if I had two strawberries for three bananas, what I would need to do is have my denominator be one. So if I divide the numerator and the denominator by three, I would have 0.6 strawberries for every one banana. 0.6 repeating, I should say. Um, or two-thirds strawberries for every one banana. Now, I'm unsure how the homework has it. If they had these flipped for three bananas for every two strawberries, it would be the same idea. I would reduce the numerator and the denominator by two. So I would divide them both by two in order to get 1.5 bananas for every one strawberry. So both these are equivalent ratios, but uh, double check the homework solutions to double uh, check if, I, uh, if it was bananas or strawberries as your denominator. Okay, state the unit rate for berry smoothie. What does he, uh, his represent in this context? So what, for the sake of this one, we're gonna have strawberries on my numerator. So what Barry did, um, Barry had four strawberries for every five bananas. So then if I divide the numerator and the denominator by five, his is basically saying I would have 0.8 bananas, excuse me, 0.8 strawberries for one banana. And so as you can see, for every one banana, he only had two thirds for the proper recipe, but Barry, on the other hand, 0.8 strawberries uh, uh, for one banana. So he had a lot more strawberries per banana. Therefore, it would have been a little bit more tart. So write an equation that represents the cups of strawberries, x, to the number of bananas um, for, for Barry and Felicity smoothies. So let's go and take a look at this.